Mm. I love dill, parsley. This is exciting. Spring has sprung, and now it's time to start the veggie garden you've always wanted. Here to show us what to do is Better Homes and Gardens Features Director, Amy Brightfield. Hello, Feature hi, Director. Hi, hi. Uh, great to see you. This is exciting. I actually have herbs, but I have them under a green light at home. Oh. Oh, you right? can do that too. Okay, well, let's talk that. about this. Do we need yeah. a lot of space? I'll say, so you don't need a lot of space. You want to start small, 10 by 10, or even smaller than that if you do a raised bed in your backyard. So you don't need a lot of space. Okay, and picking the right spot. What goes so into knowing wanna, where to get the right space? You want to sun. You want to make sure that you want to look at how the sun moves across your yard during the day, and you want to put the garden in the sunniest spot because most plants need about six to eight hours of sun a day. Some need less, but ideally you're going to put it where they get plenty of sun. I know how my son moves across the yard just by my hours of tanning. <laughs> I know exactly where the shade falls on that one tree. Um, and I feel like the Zen masters always say it's great to plant your feet and hands in the soil. Yeah, so right? you want to test your soil to see if your soil is good. So what you want to do is you want to pick the soil up in your hand. How do I know if it's squeeze good? squeeze it. And if water comes out, that means that you need more compost in there because it's not draining as well. Okay. And the other thing is rich fertile soil when you squeeze it and then you open your hand it should be a ball like this and then also it should crumble like chocolate cake <laughs> like big kind of flaky I'm tricking crumbs. myself right now to thinking it's going to taste good <laughs> You have chocolate cake in your hand, but it's good, a stress reliever. But this is the foundation to everything. This is the foundation. You want to make sure the soil, you can also get a pH kit and test your soil. And if it's too acidic, you can also add pulverized lime to it. And it's, if it's too sandy, you want to consider doing a raised garden bed where you could okay. bring soil in. And are, are there things we should do to prep it? Yeah, so you want to prep it. Maximum potential? You want to prep it. You want to put compost in. You want to put manure, duck oh, or cow manure. Nothing like that. <laughs> which smells delightful but you want to keep it organic and mm. then you want to till it you want to work the soil a little bit and till it and you don't want to step on freshly tilled soil if you have a big garden you can put wooden slats down to make pathways so you don't step on it i generally do it in a green suit so this is really making me feel right at <laughs> home is, see, and it's digging doesn't it feel good it's quite therapeutic it's good arm exercise and it should this i did not know it should rest it should before rest you plant. For a few days before you plant it, yes. Don't till it and prep it and then put the plants right in. Is there some sort of measurement in terms of when you till and when you plant? Just a few days. Okay, a couple yeah. of days. Yes. All right, so we're going to come back with more. We'll talk about planting technique. It's very important for your dill. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs> We're back with Amy Brightfield of Better Homes and Gardens, and we're learning how to plant a vegetable garden. I love a vegetable garden. It's really healthy. Is it easy to do? It's pretty easy. Um, and when you're thinking about what you want to plant, you just want to plant what you love and what your family is going to eat. Well, we love a caprese salad. I haven't figured out how to make mozzarella cheese grow, <laughs> but we've almost mastered the other components. We have tomatoes. Yes, tomatoes, tomatoes, yes. So you've got some tomato plants in the mm -hmm. front here, and when you plant them, you want to plant, you want to take the plant, and you want to mm -hmm. take the soil with the plant, so you don't, we, you don't want to lose we the don't soil that the plant right. is in, right? And so you want to dig and make sure you get it deep enough in here. Mm -hmm. And so there's the question too, sometimes you try to decide, do you use plants or seeds? That, yeah, that's the big question. So the thing is is like seeds you have to prep ahead of time inside. So I find plants are super easy because but why you do people get... why do people choose seeds? Like Gelman, of course, you know, when when Mrs. Gelman isn't at home backhoeing for him and getting the land prepped. <laughs> Well, seeds are, it's a, it's a long, it, they're cheaper, they're cheaper, but you can get a tomato plant for like three to five bucks. So you want to get the plant in there good enough so they, the roots take hold, but mm -hmm. you don't, you want to leave it exposed a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so you get in, and then spacing of the plants is super important. Right. Because you don't want to crowd anything out, because you also want to think about what is the plant going to look like when it grows. So like, the, for example, there is lettuce here, but then mm -hmm. when this, this is little, look how cute the lettuce is, it's super right. cute little, but then when it grows, it grows into this big head. Right. Also, collard greens, I built these, planted these collard greens, those are like palm leaves. And so you don't want to plant like a cabbage right next to the collard green, because then the, co the collard green leaf is going to completely shade the cabbage. But this is so much for a person like me with limited capacity <laughs> to pay attention to know. How do we know, like how, how do I space it out? 
So you want to give it, so a tomato plant usually needs like one cubic foot of space. And in a big garden, they need like 18 to 24 inches. But just make sure that they're far enough away from it. Tomatoes grow up, right? Right. So you're going to put, so, but about this, you want to give them enough room. And you want to give the room for the roots to grow and the room for, if you plant tomatoes too close together, mm -hmm. they can get diseased. Uh-huh. And so the other thing you can do is you can plant what they do what they call companion planting, right. right? And so that you plant plants and flowers together that keep the pests away. So for example, marigolds keep tomato and cucumbers healthy and keep pests off of them. So we've got a little seed packet. I'm trying to look. I don't have my glasses on. Do you have so. it? It might be behind next to your. Oh, you seat? mean this is? You know what? This is producing Alyssa Shapiro. <laughs> Okay. She's already, already open. It's already open. Pre-packaged. And you sprinkle it in. She'll tell me how many inches to put things apart. <laughs> um, and so then the next thing is watering, right? So you want to make sure that you water enough, but don't over soak it. So yes. you want to make sure you get... You get all the way around. And the other thing you want to do is you want to check the soil about three to four inches down. And even on a rainy day, because sometimes if the soil is dry, mm -hmm. three to four inches down, you know that the rain ran off and didn't soak into the garden. Got it. And so you want to make sure you cover the garden and that it stays wet. Thank you for all of this information. You still didn't teach me how to grow mozzarella cheese, so no caprese salad for you, Amy. You'd make a lot of money if you figured that out. I know, it would be amazing, <laughs> wouldn't it? Um, thank you so much. Uh, for more info, uh, go to our website. Really appreciate it.